First up, massive segment, massive topic. Will the US men's national team qualify for the 2022 World Cup? Uh, it was a wild week in CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers. And uh, I think now it's a good time to look at what happened and what's next for the US men's national team. Because as we mentioned there, against Mexico, great win in Cincinnati, really set themselves up for a successful window. Not a great performance, but a, a great result. One all uh, away at Jamaica getting the draw there. So uh, in CONCACAF, the US men's national team sit second in the table. It's very tight in the top four there. There's hardly anything between those top four teams. Um, so Nick, how do we feel about where the USA is at heading into those final six games? Because over the halfway point now, uh, are you still very confident of them qualifying for the World Cup? And of course, all they have to do is finish in the top three to qualify automatically. Yes, I am. Uh, I am. I think that I look at having three home games left, even with one being Panama. Um, if they were to lose to El Salvador or Honduras at home, it would be stunning. Um, I mean, I would be, I would be stunned. Not because of those nations. And I think we fall into this trap. And it's one of the arguments I was having online a little bit last night, as I quote unquote indulged trolls, as Andy said, was um, you know people are like, well, they haven't won in Costa Rica in so long, and. I wanted to be like, Costa Rica is, is not the same. And there are cycles. And if this was the same roster from, say, uh, four years ago, I would be nervous. But I think the team is better. It's deeper to the extent that, and I know this sounds terrible. I'm not assuming that they're going to make it. But I am still at the same time kind of identifying where I think they may end up when it comes to uh, in a World Cup. You know, when we were doing player ratings last night, I sent Andy something on Walker Zimmerman saying, I think he's great for CONCACAF, but I don't know how he's going to do in a World Cup. And when I was thinking that, I didn't, it didn't occur to me until right now, it was with the, yeah, I'm going to be stunned if they don't make it. Absolutely floored. I will be more surprised than I was four years ago, which is five years ago, which is saying something because it happened. It did, it did. In the back of my mind, uh, there is part of me um, that's a little bit concerned about the similar nature of performances away from home. Um, if you look at the loss at Panama, obviously the late win at Honduras, but that was a pretty terrible performance overall. The draw at El Salvador, now draw at Jamaica. And the, the three road games coming up um, remaining are the three hardest, in my opinion, Costa Rica away, Mexico away and Canada away. So th there isn't much room for error. Like you said, Nick, you would think at home against El Salvador and Honduras, you, you win both those games. But all of a sudden, if you tie one of those or end up a, a shock defeat in one of those, then you, you don't give yourself much wiggle room, especially with Panama um, being, I'd say, the surprise package. I know they qualified for the last World Cup, but no one really saw this coming with the new generation of players that they had. Um, so... <laughs> I'm not going to say the U.S. are going to slip into fourth place um, and have to play in the playoff, but it's probably closer than it should be uh, given the teams they played so far in qualifying. Is that is that fair to say, Andy, that the U.S. should be first and probably have a three or four point lead uh, given how they've played and the teams they've played? I, I, I don't think so. Um, I, I think they're right about where they should be. Honestly, if you look at experience the the age the youthfulness the, the complete lack of experience for about half the team that's starting all of these and the injuries as well right well th there's that and i think what we learned against jamaica and maybe the most important thing was weston mckinney is actually really really important because if you look at the couple of games that he missed those were some pretty poor performances from the u.s men's national team he came back into the team immediately reestablished himself had a really good game against mexico and i think he just brings he brings a little bit of the nastiness to this team that they don't really have. We've got a lot of really good, young, talented players, but there's not a lot of mean streak in any of them. And Weston McKinney loves physical contact with other humans. If he can get his hands on you, you can get his hands on him and you can push and shove a little bit. I think that gets him going. I think that lights something in him. And I think that makes him better. You can see times, I think, when he's a little bit disengaged and he's not really in the game. But when there's a moment where things start to pop off, like it did against Mexico multiple times, who's the first person that's in the scrum for the U.S.? It's Weston McKinney every single time. And so I think there's a little bit of toughness factor that was missing in that game against Jamaica. The midfield, especially with Moose and Busio in there together. I think combined, they're about six feet and 180 pounds between them. And so there's just there just wasn't much in there in the midfield in front of Tyler Adams. And they took Tyler Adams out of that game. And so it just it snowballed on them a little bit, I think, away from home. 
I don't worry about that, though. This is a young team on the road in CONCACAF, and they learned. They struggled through parts of that game, but they got it over the line. They needed a little bit of luck late on, but they got it over the line to get the result. And the fact that there's four good teams in CONCACAF right now, I think is great because the competition throughout all of qualifying is really tough and will prepare whoever makes it, hopefully the U.S., uh, for the World Cup next winter. That's a good point. But you mentioned something there. They got lucky against Jamaica. As good as they were against Mexico, if VAR would have been in play in CONCACAF, I'm, I'm almost positive they would have allowed that uh, Damian Lowe header to count. I didn't see any foul on Walker Zimmerman whatsoever. It was just a pretty natural, um, you know, big man rising, headed home a corner. You see that jostling happen happen on every single set-piece situation in the world and I just did not see how that was a foul. Uh, and then, of course, Bobby De over reed somehow missed a sitter from inside the six-yard box as well. The U.S. had a couple of chances. Busio curled one just over. There's a couple of blocked shots in the first half. But I think, you know, <laughs> Nick and I were on the calls after the game, Greg Bellharter and some of the players. I think there was a relief there to, to get out of Kingston with a, a point and a draw. Uh, considering Leon Bailey and Mikel Antonio started and caused a lot of problems in the second half. And the U.S. definitely sat back and tried to hold on for the draw. They got it, but I think it was more uh, through luck than, than good play more than anything else. So uh, that, maybe that shows that their luck is changing a bit against Costa Rica last month. There was a few uh, moments that went in their favour as well. So maybe they deserve that luck after what happened to them at the end of World Cup qualifying in 2017 and that freaky uh, set of events that saw them uh, not qualify. Uh, but but Nick, I mean, what is your overall feeling about where this team is at? Because we mentioned that there's, Pulisic was only fit for a, a few minutes off the bench. McKenney and Miles Robinson were missing against Jamaica because of suspension. Sergino Dest and Gio Reyna are out injured. So that's five, what, six starters there that you couldn't really call on for a big game like that. So that that shows the U.S. has very good depth now, doesn't it? And probably shouldn't be too concerned if they have those players back in January and March that they're going to get their job done and they're going to qualify for the World Cup. Yeah, and it's going to be a deeper pool also in January. Remember that we will have three games, so the rotation is going to be a little bit more important. Um, I actually look at – I wish the next match day was – tomorrow or something because it's going to be a big one for the u.s and we would i, I think we'd be less worried or, or the naysayers would be less worried about world cup qualifying because while the u.s welcomes el salvador which would be a really big surprise for them to lose that game you're going to have mexico in jamaica um mm. and um listen if mexico wants to do everybody a favor fire tata and introduce a new coach at a, such a a big part of qualifying um, and Costa Rica plays Panama. That's the kind of four or five battle right now, right? Um, with Canada going to Honduras. So I think if we could get a game here where you know you're the only team that you feel really comfortable is going to get three points out of the four teams above you or the four teams in the mix, I'd feel great about that. But on the same hand, yes, you mentioned McKenney Adams. Let's get Pulisic through the festive fixtures uh, in good condition. Uh, maybe Josh Sargent gets a little feeling good about himself under Dean Smith. I don't know that I feel great about it, but maybe he does. And a lot of things could still go in a, a way better direction. And I think that's what's most encouraging is we still haven't seen the best players together, uh, even though that will take some adjustment in some time, in some time. Definitely. And looking ahead to, to January, El Salvador at home, Canada away, uh, and then Honduras at home. I mean, the two home games there, you have you have to win those um, to put yourself in a very good position. But then the final three games are qualifying, Mexico away, Panama at home, and then Costa Rica away. And it seems to me that the Panama game there in the middle of that March slate is the key one, really, because Panama, they, most would say they'd probably be the fourth place team. But if they were to go to the US and cause an upset, then that would be tough to go down to Costa Rica and have to get a win maybe in the last game to secure automatic qualification. Right. Um, so I'm just trying to think of scenarios where I... Joe, it sounds like you're trying to keep us out of the world cup is what you're no, doing. I'm not. Because, Trust but, me, but I'm not. What if we, what if we lose every game the rest of the like, week? We can do this. <laughs> that could happen. Like, what have we seen from this team though, in three windows at home that says, Anybody but maybe Mexico, and we've, we've already seen that game, could beat this team on U.S. soil. They have a confidence now playing at home where there is an expectation from themselves, not from the outside, but from themselves 
then we just go out there, we take care of business, we get our three points at home, and then we, we will focus on what has obviously been the more challenging thing for this young team, which is going on the road in CONCACAF. And so if they can steal another point or two away from home and they can take care of business or, or, uh, at home, I, I just I, I don't see what anybody has to worry about here. And, and I think that we're almost bringing up what happened four years ago in our minds and trying to recreate it or, or maybe just protect ourselves uh, against it happening again, whatever it is. I don't think we have to do that. I think this team is just good. I think what we saw against Mexico was a real kind of, uh, you know, coming out party for, for a, a, a lot of players who we had hopes for that we had ideas of what they could be. And we saw a lot of them become that in that game. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's just, Panama at home, yes, that is the big one. The six pointer, you're winning your you win and you're in probably for either of those teams, given how that they have started. But nothing about that makes me think we can't just beat Panama and qualify for the World Cup. Well, yeah, Joe, I was just gonna say they might be enough getting it might really be enough getting seven points in the next window. Uh, I'm not saying that that is what you want to stop at or anything like that, but when you're two home games and listen, Canada looks great, but that's also forgetting that the U S is pretty good and not too far from Canada. So the change to me between an American team playing in Canada uh, versus an American team playing in Mexico or any other nation, I think this is one of the easier switches that the U S faces climate wise. So yeah, maybe just take the seven points in January and, and, and feel good. Yeah, well, that's, again, positive vibes throughout this from a U.S. men's national team perspective. Uh, Andy, I want to ask you about what does the U.S. have to improve on, uh, on the road specifically, in Mexico, in Costa Rica, and at Canada. Um, Nick mentioned it there, the goal-scoring situation. Ricardo Pepe's kind of had a great start to qualifying, but he's obviously a, a marked man or marked teenager. Um, so that that's is that a key area where they have to become more of a threat going forward and, and what do they have to improve on specifically in those three road games to get themselves in a very good position no I, I think generally speaking they need to learn to control games a little bit more and I think that will that will help the attack that will help the defense that will help all aspects of the game if they're able to be on the ball and, and a little bit more comfortable and, and so the the worry to me is they need a plan b uh tyler adams running the show and doing absolutely everything for this team is a great plan a it works we've seen it multiple times now and it's great that we've seen it for three months in a row that he is pivotal in every single one of these games but when teams decide we're just not going to let Tyler Adams have the ball. We're not going to let him dictate everything. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to run every possession, every attack of our own straight at him. We're going to make him work a little bit more. Uh, he becomes a little less effective. And, and so we need to find a way to progress the ball and still create chances. I thought it would be Musa Busio is two kind of ball carrying, you know, ball playing central midfielders ahead of him, get the ball to them. If he's going to be marked out, I thought that was, you know, that was, uh, you know, smart from Greg Berhalter going into the game, realizing that would be the game plan. It didn't quite work. The long balls into the channels worked a little bit early on, and they found Tim Weah uh, a couple of times in really dangerous spots, and they just kind of went away from it. And I did not like that, though. Those balls from the center back into the channel, if we can get Weah in the form that he is in currently right now, on the ball from 30, 40, 50 yards away, one-on-one -on -one versus the defender. That's the key right there is they don't have time to rotate. If we can do that as a plan B, then the, you know, the U.S. men's national team becomes so much more dangerous whether or not there's a good center forward in there because Tim Weah gets goals, Christian Pulisic gets goals, Brendan Aronson can get goals, Weston McKinney pushing forward from midfield can get goals. There's goals in this team. It doesn't have to come from the center forward position. We've just got to create the chances. And, and that was the one thing, especially in the second half against Jamaica, Make it, they did not do enough of. Yeah, got to see more of that from the US, but I think solid defensively so far, and uh, they're heading in the right direction, and they're nearly, nearly getting there. I'm not going to say they're there yet, guys, because I know how nervous uh, we all are a little bit that something crazy could happen because this is Concacaf, but it's looking very good at this point of qualifying with the US sitting in second place in the standings. So head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for the latest US men's national team news, World Cup qualifier analysis. We all watched the game last night together. It was a wonderful experience against Jamaica, uh, gentlemen. And yeah, we'll keep you updated on all the latest US news on PST. 
Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.